big I'd things. I'd sit with you if I could see, but I can't see. The, the big things, and then just interrupt at any point in time, because again, this is meant to be kind of more of an informal. Um, it's not as scripted, but the, the financial landscape, the things that we're dealing with this year, you know, when we're creating the budget, the stresses that are on it. Um, the biggest one was Act 127, and that was the idea that for there to be equitable education for all students, some students, depending upon their context and their backgrounds, need a little bit more in terms of resources uh, to, to be able to achieve equitably compared to their peers. You know, small schools, students from small schools, English language learners, low income, which is the one that impacts us the most, um, they all cost a little bit more um, to give them an equitable education. So it was funny when this first came out and we were looking at it uh, a year ago in detail, it's like, oh, we're, we're going to benefit amazingly because of this because we got 40% that's in the, in right. the low income, right? Um, and so uh, it was kind of funny, uh, at the start of the year, they had the wrong numbers for us and everything was reverse of what we thought and then they fixed the number at the last minutes before the you're last right. board meeting. And so we actually, we benefited quite a bit and you're gonna see that when we talk about the tax rates. The other thing that's happening this year is the ESSER funds, um, they end. So we were receiving a significant amount of money from the federal government to help students with recovery after COVID. Um, this particular district, with the work that we did, we brought in about $7 million in, in ESSER funds um, to bolster the budget over the last three years. And so we are in the final year of that money. Um, a lot of it was for programs, equipment, um, but a lot of it was also for staff. And so what you're going to see happening in, in most districts is people got used to having those staff there. So there's going to be surges in people's budgets as they're trying to keep all those ESSER people um, employed within the district, move over into the regular budget. And then the biggest thing that impacts us, this is the one that's going to, going to hurt us in terms of the tax rate, that's our common level of appraisals, right? The property values have been going up and up and up um, ever since the, the start of COVID, um, especially as folks were trying to get out of the bigger cities. You know, Vermont was a great place. A lot of people are, uh, what do they call it, when you work from home? There's remote. a word for it. Remote? Remote. It's remote, remote. but it's, uh, it's distance commuting or it's got the word commuting in it. <laughs> telecommuting? Telecommuting. Telecommuting, yeah. there you go. Okay. So, so a lot of folks um, were telecommuting, and it was kind of funny, at the beginning of COVID, we had a, a bit of surge in terms of population because um, they, they were moving into town, mostly Braintree and mostly at the elementary level. So we have two parts of our budget, um, really kind of quick here. Um, we've got what's mandated, stuff that we have to pay for. Um, the biggest piece uh, that is going to impact us this year is increases in the salaries, right, based upon what was negotiated last year with the teachers. I think it's an 8% increase that they've got um, coming. And then, like the support staff, I think we're about 9.6% is their increase. Um, we've actually been doing really good in terms of our special education population. The number of students that are on IEPs is going down in the district. It's been for the last year or two. Um, but the students that we have are very high needs, and so the costs have gone up a little bit. Early education child care tax, this was something that was slipped in that a lot of us only became aware of in the last month or two. So the state has had a lot of conversations around early education preschool across the state for everybody, and so they're trying to find a way to fund it, and so they built in a little tax um, that's charged on folks' benefits, um, and so that impacts us. And then whenever tuition changes at the technical center, because we send 60, 70 kids there a year, um, we end up having to pay a little bit more. So these are things that I call man mandated obligations. We don't have a choice. Um, the discretionary things that we put into the budget for this year are right here. Um, we've built the, the full day preschool for four-year-olds. Um, two of the locations were in the regular budget um, prior uh, to next year. Um, one of them is still being paid for by grants which are drying up. And so we're trying to shift uh, those people, those four bodies, over into the regular budget so that we can keep that preschool program going. Um, it does serve pretty much what we would call a whole class of kids. Uh, 60 is about the normal size of a class um, for uh, this district, and so we've had about 55 um, that have been attending. Probably a little bit more if it were year-round, right, because a lot of people use it for childcare. And if it's not available during vacations and not available during the summer, um, then it's 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 not as appealing. Um, uh, got a question? Yeah, go ahead. And and are we seeing an impact of having those preschools on the performance of our students in our schools? Yes. If you look, um, and this is something because you you'll get a final ends report. 
Um, if you take a look at the early grades up through grade three, um, in a grade, of course, grade three is the first one where we get the state reporting on. But if you look at the Track My Progress scores over time, they have been increasing. Those are the students that have gone through the preschool program up through grade three at this point in time, that, that full day four year old. So it has had quite an impact. The hope is um, that, because the state's been talking about it for two years, right, they're starting to generate money for it. The hope is, is that they're going to start paying us for it. They give us a little bit of a subsidy to run it, um, but it, it's only they're paying us for about a, a, a point two of the kids somewhere in that range, as opposed to giving us the money for a full one hour per student. The other thing that uh, we did is that we had uh, nurses in the district um, that were being paid for by grant funds. Um, we're trying to make sure that we retain them because we want an individual nurse at each school. Um, one of the reasons for that is, especially at the elementaries, the two small elementaries, they've never had it. Their populations have been growing. They're up between 80 and 100, depending upon whether it's Brookfield or Braintree. Um, but the nurses are, are really good in the fact that if they've got a little extra time on their hands at those small schools, they can help regulate students that get dysregulated, right? We have a hard time in, in this state finding mental health care workers, which would be the ideal situation. Because we didn't have that, it's like, okay, we can accomplish two things here um, by having the nurses on. We can make sure that we've got dedicated medical care at both both schools so the kids are taken care of and if they've got a little extra time on their hands they can help us with the, the regulation of the students um, in terms of mental health issues. Um, two bodies, one for Braintree, one for Brookfield to help them out again with the mental health challenges that we're facing coming out of COVID with students. Uh, a human resources director for central office. Um, one of the hardest uh, pieces that I've encountered, at least during my, my seven years here now, if you can believe that, um, was coming in and having just me um, be in central office. Um, so I was the curriculum director K-12, to I was the superintendent, and I was also human resources for 262 employees. And it's just too much. If you want a real leader who can lead and has the time to do that stuff, you got to free them up and build the structure for them so they can. Um, so that's going to be very helpful. And then we've had inflation the last couple of years and so we've got to increase the the supplies that that we're our custodians are using to keep our buildings clean and sanitary and so the total increase in terms of expenses um, that we're looking at for the district is 2.1 million uh, as folks who've been to these presentations in previous years know is that we've been taking the money at the end of the year that's left over right the surplus funds and we've been using to build up kind of a, a subsidy fund um, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like in more detail later, but I've got, you know, $1,033,333 that is set aside specifically to help lower people's taxes. So it's going to reduce this amount down to $1.07 million. Does SEL stand for socio-emotional learning? You got it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I don't know if it was special education. That's what yeah. I wanted to check. Uh, me mental, mental health, uh, they're, they're getting away from this and they're just saying mental health needs okay. now. So that's a good, good observation here. Now, we'll talk about this when we hit the tax rates in just a minute, right? What we've been doing in the district for the last three years is we're spending more, right? But our revenues are increasing more than we're spending. So the impact of the schools itself on the taxpayers is that your taxes are actually going down. We're asking less from you each year, and I'll show you what that looks like. The problem that you've got is the property values are going up so much it more than offsets that. And so you'll see that in a couple of these slides. So, right, the two, two pieces that kind of control what your tax rates are. You've got a part that's controlled by the district. That's what we're spending here versus the revenues that we generate. And then what's out of our control is you've got this reset. This is the Act uh, 127, right? When they started to say, hey, we've got a bunch of kids in here that need a little bit extra to be able to get an equitable education, we got to find a way to fund that. And so there was a reset of the tax base because of that. Um, and in our case here, the biggest impact that people are going to feel is the increase in property values, right? You get this misalignment between what you're assessed by the town and what the fair market value of the homes are, um, right? Because the state goes out, looks every year in this big survey to see what the, the houses are selling for in Braintree, and then they'll say, oh, you're assessed here, but your houses are selling for here. This is what you need to pay your taxes on. And that's why you see those tax increases. And then the mandated and contractual expenses, these are things that are out of our control. But so, they impact our budgets. So the one in the middle, 
I always thought, mistakenly, I think, that it would be break even because even though my house value went up, so did my neighbors. And I assumed it was based on just Randolph, Braintree, Brookfield. But I think what you're saying is it's based on the whole state and the state different towns do it at different times. Yeah, it's, um, it's fairly complicated and I don't follow how the town does its taxes because the education stuff is enough to learn. Yeah. Um, but it's based upon the grand list. Of so the it's whole the state. total, well, it's a total property value in your town. Okay. And then they get a fair market value for it based upon what that total assessed value is. And if it's right. different, they're going to charge you more taxes to make up for the difference. But the if it's just based on the state is doing that, yeah. not, not, not the, the towns. Town. Yeah, the state comes in and they look. They do at, the survey. They do the survey of all oh. the properties and they say, oh, you're assessed here, but actually your values are here. And then they call it the common level of appraisal. But, but they do the whole town at the same time. Yeah. So if our taxes were just based on our Randolph values and homes and school budget, it, we wouldn't even notice it. If it was, everybody would go yeah. up or down at the same time. If, if, you, if, if your tax assessments were based upon just the assessed value in the town, yeah. then the only thing that would be impacting you would be the taxes because of the school. Right. And in our case, if that was the case, your taxes would be going down. Right. So like, like I said, we've been spending more because we're trying to meet the board's ends, but at the same time, we've been generating either more revenue or we get some windfall benefit from the state, right? We had 40% poverty, so you know we got a, a, a big jump this year because, because of the Act 127. But if you look back over the last couple of years, if it's just the school, in 2022-23, right, you had a 7.52 cent per $100 of property value. So if you take your property, you figure out, okay, this is how many sets of $100 I have, and you multiply it by this, that's going to tell you how much your reduction would be. Yep. And so in the case of uh, a $250,000 property, because of what the school was doing, the person with a property of this value was actually going to pay $188 less per year um, because of how the school was running its budgets, which was about $15.67 a month. In 2023-24, it was again, it was a $0.07 cent, uh, per $100 of assessed value decrease. So another $180 off people's taxes. And then this coming year for next year, we actually had a 14, almost a 15 cent per $100 of assessed value decrease, which means a $374 savings um, you know, for $250,000 property. So for the average person with a property of this value over the last three years, the schools took $742 per year off your right. property. Again, it's the CLA, it's that common level of appraisal and people's property values going up that, that kind of mess stuff up. And so this is linear, so right, if you got a $500,000 property, then the impact would be double, right? So there's ways to kind of calculate where, you, where you'd be at. Um, in terms of tax impacts for next year, what you're seeing is the CLA. So in terms of Braintree, when they went out and did that survey, they came back with a CLA of 79.57%. Of that means right now, based upon the state survey, the people in Braintree are only paying 79.57% of what they should be paying based upon the state survey. So you're going to have to pay more to get that up to 100% because they want you to pay 100% of that, that fair market value. So if you're in Braintree and you got a $250,000 property, that's going to be your annual impact. That's due to property value shift. That is not due to what the schools did, right? It's out of our control. In terms of Brookfield, $388 per year. In terms of Randolph, $196. Does that make a little bit of sense or that? Yeah, it makes sense, except seeing the number there at Brookfield. Yeah, there so. They're 95% of the CLA, so why? Ah, that's a good question. So what, what did Brookfield do? They reappraised. They reassessed. That's the reassessment. In, in last year, when they reassessed, they were, they were actually paying too much. So last year, they got a they huge got decrease a big, in their right. taxes. So they lost this year. Not only did they lose that decrease, but they had to pay a little bit more because their property values went up. So I think they ended up with the largest piece. So it's the change okay. in CLA yeah. from yeah. year to year. Yeah, it's this stuff is very good. So the CLA 
and I know this isn't your area of expertise, it's the state, I think it's a state tax thing. And I'm gonna ask this, probably the same question yeah. I just asked, but let's say Braintree, 80%. 80% of what? Is that 80% of what they should be compared to the whole yeah. state? Or so, so if your house is if your house is assessed at $100,000, what it's saying is that's only 80% of what it's really worth. It's worth it's compared to yeah, but so what they do so this comes from their survey. So I'll explain what they do, and then you can tell me if it, if, if okay. what they do makes sense is with their survey is they, they look at Braintree and they look at what the houses are selling for in Braintree. And so they use that to, deter, to create this fair market value. Sure. Yeah, this is what you're assessed at, but the houses are selling here. Sure, I get that. So this is what we're taxing you on. So your $100,000 house should be selling at 120, 130. So you need right. to pay taxes on that 130. But if everything else stays the same, if everybody's assessed value goes up 20%, then our tax rate would go down 20% in order to get the same dollar value at the end of the day. It, it should, because that's the idea of the equalization, but it doesn't ever quite If work it out. doesn't, then the money's going somewhere else than our town. Where's it going? It must be going to some other place in the state? Yes. So. And why are we a net giver instead of a taker if we're so poor no, here? We are. A <laughs> he's, so he's, he's actually hitting on. One of the issues that the legislature has to, to deal with this year, the education fund. Who pays for the, who pays for the money that, that, so the education fund is what funds all schools, the 62 districts around the state. Okay. Where does that money come from? It comes from all taxpayers. So what ends up happening is that when we do our budget, it's like sending a bill to the state, and then you know White River does uh, does their budget. It's sending the okay. bill to the state, and so the state, state gets all those bills and say, okay, now we have to go out to all the taxpayers in the the state and okay. pull in the money we need to cover these bills. Okay. So if we're doing our job by keeping our taxes low and by not increasing expenses here, but what's happening in the other towns is they're taking advantage of the the, the five percent cap. If they're saying, oh. We can raise our tax rate by 10%, but we only, we're only right. going to get charged for 5% of it. Okay. Where does that other money come from? Yep. Everybody else yep. in the state. Yep. So they're taking advantage of the fact that it's the, the impact at home isn't, isn't really there. Okay. So, I get it now. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And again, I'm talking in general, not the yeah. specifics, sure. um, to make, try to make it a little bit easier. So the other thing to, to remember, um, and a lot of folks in our towns do take advantage of this, um, given that this is a, a pretty pretty good increase for next year, but again, the important thing is it's due to the changes in the CLA. It is not due to what the school is doing. The school has been doing its part to try to keep um, people's tax rates low. Um, is that there is this homestead declaration and property tax credit farm? So for households that are making less than one hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars a year, um, you should fill this out because if you're under that, it will bring your taxes down proportionally. And so a lot of people do this. So instead of being charged on your property value, if you're under $128,000 per year, they're now looking at your income. And they're using your income to determine what you should be paying for your property taxes. And so I, I highly recommend that people fill that out. And that's the basic budget. Um, last piece is just talking a little bit about the surplus. So we had a $1.4 million surplus uh, at the end of last school year. 350,000 of it, we've already moved over to subsidized next school year, right? That's part of that one, $1 million, 33, 30, 333 subsidy that we talked about. We're gonna ask the taxpayers to vote in 51,283 of it to go to our operational reserve in case we have needs during the school year that we can't anticipate. It's good to build that up a little bit. And then the remainder of it, this amount here, is gonna be split into three equal amounts to subsidize taxes in equal proportions for this fiscal year through that fiscal year. So that's $353,333 per year to help bring down people's taxes. And so what I've been doing... Lane, uh, Lane yeah. can you just, um, for anybody that might be watching sure. on ORCA, can you explain a little bit why we end up with these surpluses? <laughs> Um, there are two, two basic reasons for this. Um, the first is that when we are planning our budgets, it's a year ahead, right? We're planning right now for next year. 
When we do that planning, especially when we're looking at staff, we have to plan the budget based upon the salaries of the staff we currently have. At the end of the year, we'll get retirements and things like that. People that are high on the salary scale will leave, either through retirement or attrition. And if we're hiring and people are coming in lower on the salary scale, that's a windfall, right? Because we plan for here, we only ended up having to spend here, so this is money at the end of the year that's going to be left over. And if we remember from our mandatory things that we have to do, education is staff intensive. Yeah, 80, so 85, 90 percent of our, that's our, our big is salary cost. benefits. Sure. So. so the other piece of this, um, especially in these years with the grants, is a number of the grants are reimbursement grants. So we have to have the money to pay for what we want up front, so got to go in the budget, and then after we spend it and we prove we spent it on what we were supposed to, they give us the money back. Over the year. So that's another, another part of it. Thank um, you. Yeah. And so what, what we've done, when COVID hit, and this is the last slide, uh, when we had those surpluses at the end of each year, I would take them and I would divvy them up for the next three fiscal years. And so what you see is that in any particular year that we're in, we've got chunks of surpluses from three particular years that we're using to subsidize taxes for those years. And I did this this way on purpose because if those subsidies, uh, those, those um, surpluses at the end of the year ever run out, we can step down over the course of time. It's not like a big cliff at the end of one year, right? The next year you get two years worth of surplus, the year after that you get one year's worth of surplus, and that gives whoever is here time to be able to adjust things um, to that decrease in those subsidies. Makes sense. Um, Hopefully, you know, we, we had we had pretty healthy surpluses before even pre COVID. COVID, yeah, it was in the three yeah. to six hundred thousand dollar range a year was yeah. the norm. And then with COVID it was typically around a million million to million million four. So but that's it, unless there's questions. I think one of your early slides mentioned the impact from the budget having taxes go down, but then the impact from the CLA going up. Is there a slide that compares the two, like what the net amount is for people uh, to expect? Yes, the, I can do that. The reason I didn't is because uh, you'd have to have like three or four slides because it's different for each of our three towns, okay. right? So if you take a look in, in each of those years, so if you take a look, right, tax rates are different in each town. Yep. So it's completely so so my question that I have, because I've had a couple of people ask me, I or the average, be, be making statements, you know, we're going to have an 18% increase in our budget. Mm -hmm. What? What is the ours, ours was a 10% decrease, 9.97. 9.9 cent. In our school budget. So, so, but our education taxes will they be at? like a nine point something we are tax education tax increase because that's what people are really worried about because you keep hearing on the news there's an 18 percent increase in the education tax 18 well, percent some and of that so they're taking into that? account i think they're taking into account cla as well right oh, okay. across the state when they're looking yeah i mean i can throw up the tax sheet hold on somebody Did wrote a piece in the herald today today there was a i haven't read it yet Thanks. so I haven't read the Herald Letters yet. to the editor area. It's Saying 18% uh, education. It said 18.5. Okay, yeah. Where so, is that coming from? Is that coming from the state? Yeah, it, I don't know. Yeah. Have you heard it? it? I heard, I heard it. Know. We are not raising our budget like that. 18. No, we're, we're no. charging more, but we got such a windfall from the state. So that's that's what happened to our, our the school side of our tax rates. 9.92 It's even higher than I thought. So it's a decrease. So we're we're having instead of an 18% increase, we're having a. Is this? Am I reading this correctly? Mm -hmm. We're having a minus 9.92. If you're just percent. looking at the, the school tax rates, which is what that, yeah, it's just it's just what's happening with the school. But that's um, based on the school decisions on school spending. That does not factor in what your actual increase will be because that you have to. Okay, on CLA. so that's the actual. One the, over there, there is the actual increase if you take the CLA into account. Okay, too. that's what I need. So that's what I need. I brought stuff down, or we brought stuff down by by close to ten percent, but there's changes because in the property the tax rate and that reset that they did because of Act okay. One Twenty Seven 
this is this is what the overall increases are for each of the town. Okay. And Brookfield yeah. got so hit Brookfield's the most. So Brookfield going to get hit. Yeah. And Green Tree, but not too too bad, but a little bit. Yeah. yeah Randolph yeah. was interesting because um, not too bad. Most of the time they were right at the they were at 100 percent. You know, they were always like 101 or 99 for most of the years I was here. It was the others that had the big shifts. Randolph, the assessment values were pretty much straight on what the fair market values Have were. you been talking with the other superintendents in the area? Are they seeing similar oh, there were, there were, rates like that, or are they? I've, uh, they the, the, the districts that got hit, so we ended up getting more money from the state because we have 40 percent, you know, uh, poverty. Um, the states that actually lost out on the deal, they didn't have a lot of kids that fit into one of the categories, so they actually lost money. Um, they're, to maintain their current level of services into next year, they are looking at tax increases between 25 and 30 percent. Oh, and that's, that's what like the, Stowe and yeah. So that's what and that's what the legislature is talking. They're having like a special meeting. Yeah, because what what's happening is people okay. are trying to play that they're trying to play that five percent cap piece. They're trying to get as much money as they can because they know they're only going to get charged for the five percent five percent increase. But that money has to come from somewhere. It comes from all the other taxpayers in the, the state. So if you're gaming the system and we're all paying for it, is that fair and just? And so yeah. that's why the legislature's kind of scrambling around right now is to try to try to look at that and that. figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious if there's an estimate from the new, the 127 impact. Is there a dollar or percent estimate from just that piece alone? 18.5. 18.5% of That was what the governor total. said. Yeah, he put it out in his statement. To, that was because he was, when he was calling on the legislature to. But for us specifically? Oh. Because we're a 40% poverty level. What more did we get this year than we would have in, like, say, last year under a similar formula? Oh, yeah. yeah Tell we, them how that actually. So, the, it, uh, this is I, I need like a little a bit. To write on. <laughs> right. um, it didn't quite work out exactly. <laughs> so, how the weighting system works, I actually may have a slide on it. How the weighting system works is it isn't like, okay, you're a student of, of low poverty, so we're just going to give you a little bit of extra money. Um, that's not what they did. What they did is they said, oh, if you're a student of of poverty, then it's going to cost the equivalent of 1.4 students to give you an equitable education. Right. And so what they did is they they kind of pay us. That's what the yield is. Let's throw the yield up there. This will make sense with the yield. Um, good questions. You're making me think, and I had some caffeine, so I'm I'm actually on my game. Let's flip over to this one. Where is the yield? There we go. Right there. So basically what the yield is, is uh, it's how much the state is giving us per student, yeah. right? So that's what I mean by a tier one tax. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tier one tax is the state way back when it changed its ed, it did its ed reform. It said there's a certain amount of money that every student in the state should receive to make sure that they get a fair education. And so that's what this, this amount is. And so what we're getting this year per student is $9,452 per student. Before the waiting, yeah, we, were, we had about 850, 858 students. Mm -hmm. After they waited us and then got the numbers right, we have 1,533 students. Wow. And so we actually, we could do the calculation on this. The problem is, is that the yield has changed. Like last year, the yield was That's like 15,000. Mm -hmm. But because there's more students in the state and a set amount in the okay. education fund, the amount you get per student goes down. And so what happened with some folks is, yeah, you know, they had 1,000 students last year. They only got credit for 1,000 students this year. But last year, they were getting 15,000 per student. This year, they're only getting 9,452. Right. So that's like Stowe. That's why Stowe is looking at a 25 to 30% increase. So we had, was the number 15 last year, 15,000? It was fit like 15,300, somewhere in there. Times 800-ish. Times 858. And then you could compare it to this. And that would tell you what the change change was. Okay, yeah. calculate it. Figure it out. Go ahead and do it. I, well, I can tell you what to type in if you need. Okay. So pull up my calculator. All right. So do you? So we'll do fifteen thousand times eight hundred and eight hundred fifty-eight. Eight fifty-eight. What do you get for total? Twelve million. Twelve million. Eight hundred and seventy thousand. 
12.8 is one number. There you go. And, and 15. 33. So, so for the for the second calculation, oh, it's nine nine thousand four hundred fifty two times one thousand five hundred thirty three. And that's fourteen million uh, five hundred thousand. So we got like a two million dollar increase yeah. because of it. So that's what I was saying is right. Which is about the eighteen twenty percent. I'm saying. costing you a million dollars more, but we're getting two million more in revenue. So right. it more than covers our costs, yeah. so our tax rate goes down. Right. So we lower this year's taxes by a million, and we spread the other million out over the next three years. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. So we're we're not in bad shape. But even with that, compared our, to the state, we're in really good shape. Yes. Yes. Compared to what people are going to feel, eh, it's, yeah, it's not horrible, but, but it's not still that overall rate. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's that 4.768? 4 4.5% Yeah, what's that? Where are you at? Is that a, f but see, what? that doesn't make sense. How come, that's different oh, than I, that other I, Yeah, I flipped over. I was on the one. The, the yields can change uh, as they, they go through. So the other one was a projection. This is, this is the, the one that the state gave us to use the nine. So these are the actual numbers. Those are the actual yeah. numbers. So these are, the, these are the actual percentages, including the CLA. So sorry about that. That was my fault. Yeah. We, so what you showed us before, so, the, so Brookfield's, instead of an 18.5, they're at a 12.2. 12 12.2. Oh, and Randolph is under 5%, and Berenci is at 8.74. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. So this, this is the actual number. We were trying to predict if the yield, if the yield changes. It goes Will they down. change the yield again? Yeah, they'll, they'll have to. You, you're expect, even though we're all voting on a budget? Happen, happens every year. Because until the all the budgets are oh, voted okay. in, the state doesn't know what it needs to charge every taxpayer in the, the state to get the money. Usually their predictions are pretty good, but yeah, okay. the yield so will that yield can and yield change. So this is the number they gave us and told us to use. It's okay. 9,452. Yeah. So I apologize if I confused people because we were looking at a, at a lower number for the yield than the other, on the other sheet, uh, projecting that, yeah, based upon if, if all those folks are trying to game the system, what might happen. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. Confusing? I got it now, I think. <laughs> it, it, it'll, it'll last for about a long time. It'll last I, I, for, I appreciate you for sticking I've it out. I've been doing this for a long time, yeah. and I get out, and then I'm like, somebody will ask me something on the street, and I'll be like, ah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to go back and review how they actually calculated the taxes every year.